Okay, my name is Shema Gargouri. Uh, I come from Tunis. Uh, I'm a mother of two kids and uh, I am founder and president of a community development uh, NGO uh, called the Tunisian Association for Management and Social Stability, TAMSS. Uh, it was founded in 2006 and we've been providing technical training, capacity building training, uh, literacy training and uh, micro lending uh, for especially women uh, and youth. Uh, we've been, uh, we are based in three communities in Tunis, not all over Tunisia. Uh, we, are, we have uh, our main office in Tunis, the capital of Tunisia, and two offices, one in Sidi Bouzid in, in the center of Tunis, where the revolution started, and in Gafsa, uh, almost the, the beginning of the south of Tunisia. How would you describe the role of the women in Tunisian society? Well, for, for us, uh, I'm born in a family where the mother is working, where the aunts are working, uh, where education is accessible by boys and girls. Uh, it has never been a question the, the right of women because for me uh, and for many women from my generation, um, have, being a Tunisian woman is a status on its own. Uh, it does say that we are different from the Arab uh, Muslim uh, other women living in Arab Muslim countries because we have what we call the personal statute code that protects our uh, rights, that gives us, uh, you know, uh, all the protection, legal protection to be, I'm not talking about equality to men, but to have access to our rights as a human beings. So for, we are, we go to school, uh, we go to university, we, the, the majority of the lawyers are women, I would think it's, it's beyond 50%, university teachers, uh, it's still missing on the political level, the women participation, but uh, for Tunisian women it has never been problematic. Okay. While now the debate, after the revolution, we started hearing these debates about whether these rights are going to be kept or not, uh, and the challenges for Tunisian women um, are you know, the challenges are more serious now. Um, that they become worse? Uh, that we might lose what we had for 50 years since independence because uh, le code du statut personnel in, in French uh, was established in, after the independence, 56, I think, uh, where women have been given the right to choose their husband, to get divorced whenever they want, to have uh, equal salaries. Maybe there are a few things that are not uh, like heritage, there are a few issues, but the main, the major issues are protected. But now there is a debate whether these rights are going to be kept or that the women's rights will be inspired from the religious texts. So there are some, de some debates and I think uh, Tunisian women have to be very careful about m what they might lose. And I don't think we're uh, ready to lose these, or will we be ever ready to lose these rights? Mm -hmm. I, I, we will work for it. Uh, it's not a question of being veiled or uh, not. It's the Tunisian woman went to school, she's educated, and I don't think she will be um, accepting that she w that she's controlled by uh, mm -hmm. uh, her husband or her mm -hmm. brother or her father. I don't think she's uh, she's gonna accept that, even if she has religious beliefs, you know. Yeah, I mean religion first of all yeah. doesn't blame women. So, so yeah. uh, do you th would you say that this is like this all over Tunisia, or is this more or less a special situation you live in? What do you mean uh, all over Tunisia? You mean the feeling about uh, losing our rights? Yeah, and, over... and also the very precious. Uh, point of view you have that we Tunisian women are different from other Arab women. So they all have the rights or is it just uh, uh, for for special groups? It's not, I'm, I'm not here uh, talking on behalf of an elite. I mean okay. my work on the ground, I am, I am meeting women who've never been to school. And believe me, part of why I did this NGO, it's thanks to these women. They've got such willingness and such personality to own their own lives. 
and as they are so um, independent in their mind, so it has nothing to do with education, it has nothing to do with social status, they want to make their own living, they want to be independent, they want to be make decisions inside their homes, they want to send their kids to school, so they are, and they are entrepreneurial like uh, by nature. And this is what pushed me to, to do this NGO is how can we, we should not lose this energy and these women have to be given the opportunity. And so I'm not representing an elite. These women and in rural areas, it's the women who are working, who may, are making the living for their homes. In the excluded areas, communities, the same thing. So, but the thing that is missing in Tunisia, that we took our rights for, how do you say, for granted. And now, what we have to do as civil society is say, well, these are the rights you have, women in Tunisia. Be careful to lose them, because mm -hmm. this is what's going to happen if ever you lose these rights. Yeah. So, we, we took them for granted. I personally took them for granted. For me, women's rights has never been a priority, but now, it, becomes. it became a priority, knowing that one day somebody might touch these rights. Okay. So, uh, and the awareness program is not just for an elite, it's for everybody, mm -hmm. from the rural woman till the intellectual. I didn't know the privilege I had as a Tunisian woman, and I had to go back to the personal status to, to, to read about these rights that I might lose. Because yes, I mean, we feel like we are Tunisian women, we have the rights, but what are the rights and why are they being debated? Are these rights uh, contradictory to, what, to, to, to the religion? Then if yes, then we are really in trouble. So we might lose them. If ever our constitution is going to be inspired from our religion, so then these rights could be eliminated because they are contradictory to what religion is saying. Yeah. So yes, I mean, it's a very sensitive issue. Yeah. So, uh... You're working in the field of women empowerment. What do you precisely do? Can you give us a few examples of your Let work? Let me just say, when we work with women, we don't exclude men. <laughs> we want to create a nice. <laughs> yeah, we want to cre create homogeneous, uh, homogene societies. We do. We do. Um, if a woman wants to create a business, we we talking about women in excluded areas. We're talking about women who are illiterate. We're talking about women who are from poor families or who belong to uh, poor families. We're talking to women about women who don't have access to, 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 uh, to trainings or to capacity building or to financial services that the elite might have. So, so about how many percent of women are we talking? Do you have some so, numbers? Yes, I, I would say I, I have some numbers but on a community basis. Yeah. Uh, we don't deal with regional. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we like uh, touching about a thousand women, uh, women in, in the suburb of Tunis, the capital, and about 600 in Gafsa, 600 in Sidi Bouzid. So we're not talking about thousands, but we, um, how do we say, we stay with these women for two, three, four, five years. Mm -hmm. So they come for training, they get a two-year training. It's not a one month or three month. Uh, they get, if they ask for a loan, we, we stay with them so they can build the business. So it's really about companionship as opposed to just delivering the service and saying goodbye. So doing this, we cannot uh, have a big outreach, but what we want to do after the revolution is really expand our outreach and uh, built our, our capacity as an NGO so we can have a more effective uh, service on the ground. How is it funded? Oh, this is my specialty, I would say. <laughs> That's why I got... Uh, it is funded by the, uh, by the foreign embassies in our countries, okay. uh, by the cooperation programs. European, North American, so we're funded by the French, the British, the Swiss, the uh, well, Germans not yet. Maybe it will come. Uh, by, United, by UNICEF, with uh, Canada, United States, okay. uh, yeah. to, name, to name some of them. Uh, uh, private company like the Shell company, the oil shell uh, company. Uh, we, don't, we were not successful with the private sector because we are not, we don't have what we call corporate social responsibility in Tunisia, not yet. 
Um, we've, we are also funded by foundations like the French Foundation, the Dutch Foundation okay. called the Grateful. Okay. So it's multinational funding. You don't put uh, your eggs in one bag. Okay. And uh, it, is, it is interesting because there are different approaches even through the funding mm. organizations. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a learning experience for us. So we thank everybody who believed in us before the revolution because those who went I mean, who um, sponsored us or who funded us before the revolution, it was challenging for everyone, mm -hmm. including me, because uh, uh, um, it's, it's, it was considered as having access to foreign uh, funding, which was very sensitive. But anyway, we, 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 found, uh, we found funding uh, organization mm -hmm. that uh, sustained that. So what has changed in your work after the revolution besides, you know, the the awareness that women have to take care about their rights? Well, we have a more uh, vibrant civil society. Uh, to which extent it is efficient, I don't know. We have many, many newly born uh, NGOs uh, because the law for NGOs were, was very difficult then. It was changed after the revolution then. We had all this raise of numbers of, number of uh, NGOs. Yeah. Um, the goodwill, I mean, uh, the, uh, how do you say, the uh, citizenship of the Tunisian uh, there is a like a birth of a, a new responsibility toward uh, uh, by the Tunisians toward their society um, the funds more and more funding organizations are coming more and more international NGOs are working with us on the ground um, I can't say where it is going. Uh, uh, I can't tell whether these programs are going to really be sustainable programs or not. Mm -hmm. um, but it is good, I would say. Uh, it is good in terms of giving uh, the NGOs more access to funding so they can really play a role in this transition towards democracy. We have many, many things to learn as NGOs. Uh, most of them, they don't have the capacities to conduct sustainable work on the ground or maybe to even exist after a year. Um, so capacity building is a need for, uh, for the NGO sector. How would you uh, describe the overall atmosphere these days in Tunisia? Is it kind it's of... It's boiling. It's boiling? In yes, which way? It's, a, it's, a, it's a country, wherever you go there are debates, Where the, the, wherever you go there are conversations and everybody is talking politics now. Um, Tunisia is searching for itself. I think it is, uh, I would take it in a positive term. Uh, I'm not going to say I'm optimistic or pessimistic. I think it's a normal process that Tunisians for the first time ever, after I would say many centuries, not even many years, that they are asking about who they are. What is a Tunisian? Uh, what is our relationship with uh, with our religion? What's our relationship with uh, with our uh, uh, with the Arab world? What is our relationship with our history? And how can we combine all those in one entity called Tunisian? Uh, the challenge also is to write a constitution that will reflect all this, because we are rich in history. We are Arab by heritage. We are Muslim religion, but we are many things at the same time. How can we? Mm, Balance. find this balance this is the biggest challenge and it's amazing i would not wanna i am so lucky to live this and to be able i hope to stay alive and tell the story to my grandchildren you because it, it's it's gonna take time it's gonna take time but our role here is to really to move this debate to a consor consortium you know tunisians have to come to an agreement we are still disagree about many things. There which is, is a disagreement, I mean. which is fine. I mean, people are like suspicious about. Oh, you have the Salafist, the religious, you know, feeling that is grow. Of course, of course, they have been frustrated for many years. They want to express themselves. They are part of our society. They are there. Um, we should not let them go to violence, but we should talk to them, because they are Tunisians like me. Anyway, so. Um, we need to be uh, more open. There is no one Tunisian there. We are discovering ourselves as mosaics and we need to make a nice picture of this mosaic, you know? It's an, uh, it's a, I would say it's a work of an artist. So all Tunisians have to be artists now. 
Really. That's a great ending. Thanks yeah. a lot. Thank you. <laughs> that was beautiful. Thank you.